Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here at GDC 2014. One of the big surprise announcements was that Sony has its own virtual reality headset. I'm here with George Andreas. You're a creative director at Sony Computer Entertainment. That's correct, yes. Um, and you guys have a virtual reality headset that's we working do. right we do. now. Yes, it's, it's been rumored over the last few months and uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's the first public outing so people get to see it for the first time. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to be showing it to the public and uh, to kind of make those rumors a reality, I guess. So yeah, it's So it's, it's called Project Morpheus. Project Morpheus, that's And correct. that's based on uh, the Lord of Dreams, the Sandman. Lord of Dreams, yes. Mm. Uh, some people kind of relate it a little bit to the Matrix movies as well, but uh, yeah, Lord of Dreams, it's about kind of projecting and uh, you know, a little bit of a deity, new worlds, new new things to experience. So. And it's an HMD that works with the PlayStation 4. That's correct, yes. Um, this is something you guys have been developing for a while now. Where, where did this start and what, what was the design? Approach. So there was a talk given the other day, Shuhei, uh, a leader yes. of the Worldwide Two Days. He uh, basically was talking about the development of the kit has been nearly two or three years now. Um, so it's something that's been in the background. Uh, the teams that have only been working very hard to try and make, uh, I guess, make make it a reality. You know, I guess with uh, with all electronics companies, especially with Sony, always looking to do new things and try and forge ahead and look for the next big thing. So uh, I think once we started putting some demos together and we got to see some traction internally, um, there were a few disbelievers. Uh, it took a while to kind of get people to believe in it. Uh, but I think once you got the great demos there, uh, the demos were able to really punctuate how fantastic uh, VR really really is. Um, and so, yeah, so... It's, so it's in terms good. of the technologies, what are the technologies that make VR possible now, the sense of presence that you guys want to achieve? Yeah. I mean, PlayStation 4 obviously had to come out first because it's an accessory for that. Um, but what in terms of the head tracking, in terms so, of display? So there's a lot of things. Obviously, we have a very a very low latency. That's one of the big, big key things, really, to try and stop things like nausea. Um, we also have a very, very fast frame rate as well. So all of these factors combined together. We have two uh, 1080p uh, screens, obviously. There are two 1080p There's screens? There's two 1080p screens, okay. so high resolution. Um, and all these factors come together to try and make the experience as believable as possible. Uh, the software that we create has to be uh, also trying to kind of get the player immersed as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Some people call it sense of presence, I call it true immersion. Um, but true immersion is something that allows players to actually adopt uh, a persona, uh, to be in the experience and to be experiencing it in a way that they would if they were there in the real, the real world. And sure. All of these elements together, things like motion tracking, being able to move your head to the left and to the right. Um, as you can see with these, uh, these new headsets, we have LEDs at the back as well, so we can track 360 degree rotation. Um, we have other things in our AK system, such as the DS4 controller, we have the move controller as well, so that gives us limbs if we want to have two limbs in the experience as well. Um, so all of these things can add together to make a very immersive experience. I want to get into the technical details. Let's start with the display. You said two 1080p displays. Yes. It's, it's 960 by 1080 for each eye? That's correct, yes. And uh, you guys are using an LCD. What, what's the advantage of using an LCD over an AMOLED in I terms of the, the RGB stripe and the, you know, the screen door effect? So I, I think it's more to do with the refresh uh, and the ability to just get a clean, a very clean image. Um, okay. What's the refresh rate you guys are using? Oh, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. Okay. Actually. But it's a high enough refresh it's rate. It's high enough and enough, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It'll be very smooth, yes. Okay, and then you guys are using uh, custom-made optics for a field of view? That's correct, yes. Uh, what, what degree field of view will your eyes be able to see? Um, so there is somebody else we can get involved. It's more technical if you wanted to go into all those technical specs. I'm not sure we're releasing too much of that information mm. today, but okay. uh, we can talk a little bit more about that. All-encompassing all field it of is, view. It is, yes. And we'll be able to turn all the way around as well and be able to see uh, you know, things that are behind you as well. So, so yeah, 360, 360 degree view. 360 degree. Yeah, 360 so it uses uh, the camera and it's IR based? Uh, yes, it okay. is, yes. So IR LEDs all around? All the way around from the front and to the side and around the back as well. So as I said, we'll be able to turn all the way around and uh, we'll also always be able to kind of get your orientation and see where you are. So. And in terms of the lighting in the back, uh, what's the function of having that light in the back? Uh, so when the players turn away from the camera, uh, they've got a point of reference at the back of the head, so they can turn all the way around and we do get to see, you know, we can have proper 360 degree rotation. I think there are some VR systems that don't have full 360 right. degree rotation. Right. But it's very important from an experiential perspective to allow players to, to experience VR truly and totally. And I think being able to turn all the way around, being able to look all the way up and look all the way down is, is part of VR and it's part of the immersion. Um, and so having LEDs at the back does allow us to kind of push that level of, of interaction. Uh, you guys are designing this to work standing up. In this demo in particular, I was able to bend my knees down and That's see correct. the virtual model bend down. Yes. Is this going to be uh, experience designed both for standing up and sitting down? So yeah, we're working on a bunch of different demos at the moment. This one is, 
all about standing up because in the real world you'd stand up in a shark cage and so mm -hmm. we thought this would be a great uh, example, uh, a great demonstration of the tech from a standing position. There are experiences that work very well from a seated position as well. It just depends what you're doing. If you're in a cockpit, for instance, that would work quite well if you're seated. Right. Um, but we, we have a bunch of different demos that we've done and this is just one of those. And it plugs into the PS4. Is that going to be a pass-through system? Uh, uh, the PS4 has your HDMI out. The, the idea will be that it's literally you go to wherever it is you're going to get it from, whether it's Best Buy or Walmart's, and we want it to be as simple and as ergonomic as possible. People will be able to buy it from day one, go home. We don't want a lot of setup. We want it to be very straightforward and intuitive. Plug one lead in and hopefully that will be it. So we want it to be very, very simple. There is a breakout box on the system as well uh, that allows us to have a, a big screen uh, display as uh, well. So you so can still plug screen. it in onto you your TV. You can still plug it into the TV, yes. But it would be a single player experience if PS4 is going to support one of the, the well, more PS4 well, this, this is what we're doing. It is. But what we're trying to do is trying to make VR not just something that's a solitary experience. I think we do have a we're calling the social screen where you can actually see the feed on the big screen mm -hmm. and we feel that kind of energizes the room people are able to see what's going on and experience what the uh, the person who's wearing the VR headset can actually see um, we do have other ideas with this as well we actually got it backstage where we can actually use companion devices as well uh, so for instance in this particular demo we can actually throw like another shark into the scene or even generate a sea turtle and play around with that in the scene so if someone people, had a PS Vita and that's correct that's correct so it makes it a more social experience it's not just an isolated uh, an isolated experience and I think that's one of the big things a lot of game design opportunities lots yeah. plenty plenty uh, in terms of the ergonomics it's a really interesting design that the headband I thought was really comfortable um, what is this going to be the design approach that you guys are experimenting yeah, with? Yeah, so obviously as you go through any kind of hardware launch, um, you, you iterate on the design and uh, this is kind of where we are currently today. Um, it's taken uh, many steps to get it to where it is today. There are more designs that uh, we're looking at. So the ergonomics are, are coming on. This isn't final. There will be uh, modifications made to this design. Uh, but, you know, Sony are a great electronics company. Yeah. We're no consumer electronics. Uh, we're making something that will hopefully be aspirational. It looks very cool. We've got a lot of great um, feedback from people so far. Some people think they look like Iron Man kind of wearing the, sure. the suit. So it looks very cool. So we're on the right path with it. And we're very happy with where we are currently today. From a development standpoint, uh, do you feel like your feature complete? Are you looking to add more features? Oh. What, what are the tar next targets for you in terms of development? I think, I think ergonomics is a big one. We want to make sure that it's very easy to put on. It's very comfortable. Sure. Um, the, obviously, the software that we're going to be creating will, will help kind of demonstrate uh, what how cool VR can actually be. Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of uh, the LEDs, I think that's pretty much there or thereabouts in terms of being able to get 360 degree rotation. Um, we obviously have the other ecosystem to combine with this. Like I said, you already have the Move or the DS4. So we have, we have peripherals there that do allow us to dig into, I guess, VR and to make unique experiences. Um, but it's a work in progress. This is where we are today. And we'll see in the future where, where it does go. And it will be in the future. So you guys have said it's something not for this year. Well, we're not saying anything specifically about the release date. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that's still, still under consideration. Um, and I think this is just our way of saying, you know, Sony's in this space. We're looking at VR. We think it's a viable thing for the future. We don't think it's just for games as well and just for gamers. Uh, we do feel that there are or there will be applications that will appeal to a lot of different people. Um, multimedia experiences. Multimedia experiences, movies, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that we're working on at the studio as well that, uh, that kind of bring that a little bit more to the fore. Um, but yeah, we, we think VR is something that will be very uh, groundbreaking. It is obviously creating a lot of buzz at the moment and hopefully we can generate enough interest and, uh, and the right software to really showcase that. Awesome. Thank you so much, George. We okay. can't wait for this to come out into the real okay. world Great. and play it with our PlayStation 4s as well. Well, that's it for GDC 2014. We're so lucky to be able to try out Project Morpheus here at the Sony booth. I'm Norm. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel with more amazing stuff from virtual reality at GDC, video games, tech, all that kind of stuff on test.com. We'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, Norm, we just got out of the demos. What, yep. what did you think? So we did both the same demo with the D. Yeah. They had EU Valkyrie also, which I didn't get to try. We didn't get uh -huh. to try. Uh, it was a real polished demo. That, that was literally the first thing that jumped out to me is that this is software that looks like it was made by a real development house. Not, not that the Oculus demos we've seen haven't been great, but the motion of the animals was great. The flow of the, all the fish in their, what are, what are schools? Schools, schools of, fish. of fish were all really natural and fluid. That also tells me, it also brought to like how uninteractive that demo was. All you were doing was looking around. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the Oculus demo where you were playing a game. Well, we didn't play Valkyrie, which is a game. It's a space shooter, it's a cockpit game. Um, this you were standing up though also, which is unusual for VR demos in my experience. I don't think I've stood up during a VR demo or any VR experience so far 
Uh, not, oh, not here, yeah. Oculus, you have to sit down. Yeah. And they made a big point of saying that this is going to be both a couch and standing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, for eValkyrie, I imagine that's something you're going to sit down and play with. Um, so and, pr pr let's talk about presence, though. Yeah. Yes. Because in this demo, you could you're in a cage, you're a diver, you can look down, you can see your the fins on your feet, and because of the the eye camera does some skeleton tracking, when you bend your knees, your knees bend in the game, and you got that thing that I wanted during the Oculus Couch Nights demo the other day. Um, now, unfortunately, that's where it ended. If you lifted up a foot, the foot didn't move. That was super disorienting. Yeah, so all you were doing was squats the entire time. Uh, you also had the DualShock controller, yeah. which that's tracked by the camera, so it has rotational movement and a little bit of translation. It, it, yeah, so it has gyros, accelerometer, and uh, and the camera knows its position based on the on the light. Um, so you were able to you were able to do head and body independently, or at least head and gun independently. Uh, so what was interesting about this is I thought the ergonomics. It was mm -hmm. felt really comfortable. Uh, the band, once that elastic band got over your head, because if you look at the, the headset, there's it's white plastic, yeah. but inside the white plastic is a, a black elastic band. Mm -hmm. That fit pretty snugly. There's no top band like you have with the Oculus. Right. And I think the design here, the weight distribution works. I think it's probably a little bit heavier. Um, the other thing that they did a really great job with is you put the headset on, and then, it, they, you know, again, it's a prototype, so this all can probably change. But when you put the headset on, the visor is pretty far out, and then you squinch it in. Right, you slap it, it down. And it had almost like a rubber gasket rather than a foam pad and a big hard plastic shell. So even though I was wearing glasses, it pushed right up to the to the to my eyes and gave me a pretty good seal. Um, like binoculars. About, about the same field of view uh, as as the Oculus. I would say roughly equivalent to putting on a dive mask. I think this dive demo didn't happen by accident. Right. Uh, also, they're using an LCD panel. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about uh, square pixels mm -hmm. uh, with the screen door. High enough resolution, I didn't notice the screen door. If you stare really closely, you, you can see it. But right. if you're moving, not so much. Uh, the RGB stripe arrangement of these sub-pixels, noticeably different from your, mm -hmm. your Pentel Strike and the AMOLED. Not as bright, clearly, as the Oculus in the demo. I, that didn't bother me because you're, you're again, you're in a dark environment, you're isolated. Now how about moving? Um, moving, I didn't notice a whole lot of motion blur, but because of the demo that was that we were in, there was not a lot of high contrast situations. So you were looking at bright blue on light gray, and it, like nothing was moving super fast. You couldn't move the camera super fast. My feeling is that uh, in terms of the persistent vision, it is better than Oculus DK1, but I thought there was more smearing on I the Morpheus think, yeah. than on Development Kit 2. I would definitely agree with that, uh, or Crystal Cove for that matter. Um, I, I was pretty impressed. Like This was much much better. The optics were great. You had a pretty good field of view. Um, the comfort was there. Having the controller and the skeletal tracking and the camera actually added a lot to that presencing. It's a piece that Oculus doesn't have. So concerns right now, frame rate. Uh, there were some people, John Carmack on Twitter, talking some smack about PS4 not being able to pump out enough frames yeah, I think his, on this. His quote was, PS3 games that run in 60 frames a second will work with this. Um, and then he came back later and said, hey, not taking shots. It was not a high poly demo. Yeah. Uh, and also, you can only use one with the PS4. You're not going to be able to plug multiple Oculus. I don't think you're going to be able to plug Morpheus. multiple Ocul Oculus into one computer either. Um, I, I, you know, I think the thing to take away from this is when we posted the Oculus thing yesterday, or day before yesterday, a lot of people came out and were saying, hey, this is a war, the VR war is on. This stuff is all so new that, that anybody, especially a company of Sony scale and with the de software development resources that Sony has, coming in and, and building for this for VR is good for the VR community. Like it is, it is not a zero sum game. People buying Sony stuff aren't going to not buy Oculus stuff. It's not going to take away from anything. And, and more people pushing forward will just be better for everyone. And there are lessons learned for both companies. I mean, I, I think that this was a really impressive first showing. I mean, they, and they had the advantage of the late start. Um, I, I'm interested to see what Microsoft does next and anybody else who comes in. So, All right. Um, I guess that'll do it for us at Sony at GDC 2014. See you guys later. Bye.